Joining us now to discuss Pokemon and BYU women's <laughs> soccer is Chris Watkins, associate head coach. Chris, welcome back to Studio B. Uh, thanks for having me, and I'm not sure how much I can add to the Pokemon discussion, but I'll try. Okay. Well, what, first of all, what do you know about it? I know a kid yesterday as I'm walking by my, my kid's elementary school asked me, have I seen a Pokemon thing? And I'm like, <laughs> like, no, I've got some old cards at my house where my son had. And he was seen, very intense. Is he like, around he wanted, here? <laughs> yeah. oh. He was he was committed to something. I don't know what so was going on. So you utilize the GPS on your phone to go and catch these fictional creatures, yeah. and uh, it's it's a worldwide phenomenon. Are you worried that this might interrupt something, <laughs> some things that you have going on with your girls and BYU right, right. soccer? There's this big trend in soccer, right? It's more and more important in the world, and now boom, Pokemon <laughs> comes in and. Nobody cares about well, you it on Nintendo. You've got camps going on right now. I would venture to say if you pay attention to some of those campers, <laughs> right. they'll be walking around with their phone. Yeah, I was just looking at 260 kids, and they were kind of looking down. Maybe I need to double check, turn off the GPS for the week. Uh, the indoor practice facility is a huge training ground for uh, – or Pokemon. It's a poke stop. <laughs> it's a poke stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Sad, sad, sad. Oh my goodness. <laughs> By the way, uh, speaking of worldwide soccer phenomenons, the Euro 2016 final happened yesterday. One of the great stars, Cristiano Ronaldo, had to leave the game in the 23rd minute. He was, you know, moved to tears because he couldn't play. And you want to play in the biggest games on the biggest stage. Well, Portugal pulls off the upset of France anyway. How much influence does a game like that have on the game here in america We're, i'm starting to see the trend of it. it's popular to growing for sure but how much how much does a game like that matter to americans well you know yesterday i'm watching the game and i'm thinking i want this to be a great showcase for the game because so many new eyes are watching and uh, unfortunately yesterday wasn't wasn't the best game actually i'd say it's about the worst game in the <laughs> oh man so it was unfortunate in that way but you know it was for cristiano ronaldo i think it was a great game because those of us who don't like him and i'm in that camp i'm not a big fan <laughs> But he really showed how much he cared yesterday, right? I mean, he's working hard, got injured, and he really saw how much he cared. And I think that's one of the knocks on him: is he is he about himself or is he about the team? And I think, I think I, you know, I think we all saw a little bit more in him, uh, a little more depth in him yesterday. So, I, I still wouldn't buy a Ronaldo jersey by any stretch, yeah, but yeah. I can appreciate him a little more now. Any particular team you were rooting for in this whole thing? Uh, you know, I always like Spain, um, and and they're getting a little old. They probably need some younger players. I liked France. They got some young players who are doing very well. And I love Iceland. I've loved Iceland since they qualified a year ago. I read every article I can on Iceland. It's a <laughs> remarkable story. A country smaller than Utah County as far as population. 320,000 people in the country. Yeah. And developing the players they're developing, it, it puts us to shame. We're, we have a problem here in the county, developing players. Iceland's perfected it. We need to get on the ball. Yeah, in all seriousness, how do you implement a tournament like that and styles and – uh, the world professionals into the game here at BYU. Yeah, well, I'm, that's that's difficult. There's a lot of different styles that come together. On our on our women's team, you know, we're we're pretty. We have such a, an established style of play that players come in and they adapt pretty quickly because there's no other way but our way. It, it works. It has worked. We need to refine it to get even better. But uh, our girls do a good job of adjusting and adapting to what we do quite quickly because it's mainly hustle working hard and that's inside everybody sometimes you just gotta pull it out you guys uh, released your 2016 schedule just a couple of days ago and certainly one of the things that jumps out is just how tough of a schedule it is i mean you just look at the first couple of games as we mentioned ucla washington state nebraska penn state tennessee what are the benefits of of loading up a schedule like you guys have yeah well the benefit is of course we can find out exactly how good we are before we get to November and, and have to find out at Stanford, right? And, and last Terrible year, draw that I'm still upset about. <laughs> I don't talk about it. <laughs> so, so, you know, we have a few of those games every year. This year we have a few more than we have in the past, and so hopefully we're used to that, that intensity. Our conference is a great conference as well, so there's certainly nothing wrong with our conference, but we have a great team. We, have, we return almost everyone, and if we go into the tournament – as a seeded team, we can avoid a tough game like a Stanford in the second round, and that's our goal. We want to play these, you know, all these great teams, and hopefully get a seed and and see a team like Stanford in in the in the you know the elite, elite eight, eight, elite eight yes. or something like that. And it's under our control. We have the players to do it this year. We had the schedule to do it. Now it's up to us. So, what's the most important element of that schedule coming together? Is is it RPI based? I mean, because we talk about RPI with basketball and with 
baseball, we talked about it a ton, and and the baseball yeah. team got burned a little bit by RPI. Yeah. So is is that the number one metric you look at when you're scheduling? Uh, for sure. I, any coach who's doing something different is making a huge mistake if their goal is to to be at the highest level, to to go to the Final Four, or win a national championship. You have to look at the RPI, and and know that you might have a stumble or two along the way. But if you stumble against an RPI of a two thirty, you're not getting in as, as, at an at large bid. So for us. We won't schedule a team that's in that RPI. We won't play them. And so if you look at our schedule, all of these folks have a, have a great chance of being in the top 100 RPI. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Without exception, including in our conference. You know, I think we're going to see some, some improved play in our conference. Last year, our conference was a couple teams that were poor. And they've got a, you know, specifics, got a new coach. I think they'll be a little bit better. And so we may have a schedule here. A DU had a bad year last year, but the year before, they were in the top 50 RPI. So... We've set ourselves up to even stumble potentially and still have a great RPI and great experience to lean on when we get to the NCAA tournament. You mentioned it just a moment ago. You bring back almost everybody from last year's roster. So with that in mind, what do you think is possible for this team this season? Well, I mean, we're still not the most talented team in the country. I don't I don't think we have um, – you know the resumes of some of our some of our opponents in the top 25. I, I think that's that's probably a fact. However, experience-wise, we have as much experience as any team out there, I believe. Um, and quality-wise, even though our resumes maybe don't have some of the national team uh, accolades that some of the other programs do, I feel like our program uh, is in great shape. Maybe better than ever before. I've been doing this for 21 years. Jen's been doing it for 22. She's on board. We feel like all the pieces are in place. So we just have to, you know, we have to test ourselves with a good schedule, and we have to uh, make sure we stay sharp and hungry. And I think that's a legitimate concern for all of us as, as a staff and players right now. You got a taste of that uh, Elite Eight energy in 2012 when North Carolina came to Southfield, and it ended up being a crazy overtime loss. But I can't help but draw a few parallels in terms of experience and what you bring back with this team to that team in 2012 am i off base doing so no i think it's fair um the quality the returning players the returning stars and we have two returning all americans on our roster right now right one one from 2015 one from 2014 both forwards we have a great goalkeeper that that team had a great goalkeeper the pieces the spine of the team has that same same look and feel that it had in 2012 and i'd go back to you know our elite eight experience back in uh, 19 or 20 what 2002 i think uh, when we when we went to the Elite Eight then as well. Now, it's interesting. I'm looking at the names of, of this year's players. Ashley Hatch, Nadia Gomes, Michelle Murphy-Vasconcelos, Elena Medeiros, Maddie Lyons. Any one of them could lead the money. team. Any one money. of them could lead the team in goal scoring. Yeah. Who knows who, uh, but they're all so good. I mean, can you imagine <laughs> lining up against us as a defender and w- what's the coach going to put on the board? Who do you want to take away from us? Ashley Hatch, great. Nadia. Nadia was the conference player of the year last year. So so we're in good shape. We have to stay healthy, and we have to stay hungry. I watched the girls play this morning. They were playing hard, but there's a little more in there. Mm. Um, Tom Homo's talking to our team today at lunch, uh, probably on a similar topic. I think we all know we're capable of some special things. We have to make sure we get there because a year from now we could look back at a squandered opportunity if we don't. The blue and white game, I believe, is under a month away. I think so. I don't, what is it? Uh, August 6th, yeah. Yeah. Under a month away. We're ready to go, Coach. Uh, happy Slurpee Day. Good luck with the Pokemon hunting and uh, sur- <laughs> and surviving the summer camps as well. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Chris Watkins back on BYU Sports Nation in Studio B. The BYU women's soccer team, you can expect a very high preseason ranking uh, for a team that's loaded with